Okay. Members are reminded to direct their remarks to the chair and not to a perceived viewing audience. Under the Speaker's announced policy of January 9th, 2023, the gentlewoman from the Virgin Islands, Ms. Plaskett, is recognized for 60 minutes as the designee of the minority leader. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And you know, it's so exciting to be up here and to have a, be able to have this discussion. I want to thank the minority leader, um, my colleague and good friend, Mr. Hakeem Jeffries, for allowing me this time to direct everyone's attention to the importance of this month. I know that it is Women's Month and we've been hearing so much about this, but what's an honor for me is to stand to you today because it is also Virgin Islands History Month. I stand on the shoulders of strong Virgin Islanders who came before me, a people who are known for their courage, leadership, sacrifice, and most importantly, their resilience. The Virgin Islands is known for so much more than just white sandy beaches and as a popular vacation destination. I tell people all the time, there's more than just the beaches, a reason why seven nations have fought, bought, and done what was necessary to attempt to own these beautiful islands. We are made of culture-rich lands and a diverse history. Though not always pretty, there's great beauty in our past that shaped our present and directs us towards our future. Like most Caribbean countries, the Virgin Islands history begins with the story of pre-colonial inhabitants of the island and, of course, of slavery. And even beyond that, to a rich history of people, of families, of communities working and striving every day. Many people are unaware that the Virgin Islands is the only place that is part of the United States where Columbus actually set foot. Many other places he just looked out and said, I'm going to name it this or that or the other. But the Virgin Islands, and in particular the island of St. Croix, is the place where he actually had resistance from the inhabitants who lived there. And we know that from his own logbooks, from people on the boat who fought, who recognized that the Caribs that were there were putting up a resistance to these men coming in 1492. In 1733 on the island of St. John, we have recorded the first major slave insurrection in the Western Hemisphere. The individuals and people there were so incensed at being enslaved that they organized themselves, actually overthrew those who had enslaved them and held the island for a year before the Danes could organize with the English, the Spaniards, with others to fight back and take back the, the land. I'm so grateful that in this last Congress, this body in a bipartisan way were willing to support a recognition of that. And there will be this year a plaque put up at Ram's Head on the island of St. John, the site of where the organizers pulled, brought themselves together and made the determination that they would rather commit suicide than go back to slavery. Ram's Head is the location where they uh, engaged in collective suicide by jumping off of the cliff rather than going back to slavery. In 1848, the Virgin Islands is also the place on the island of St. Croix where individuals organized, worked together, and overthrew completely slavery well before the Emancipation Proclamation was made here in the United States. It is one of only two places, the Virgin Islands and the island and the people of Haiti who were able to obtain their freedom through violent and organized overthrow. We're blessed as Virgin Islanders to celebrate Virgin Islands history, as well as the same month as women's history, because Virgin Islands history is not complete, of course, without women. To begin, I must first acknowledge the record number of women, as well as the record number of people of color currently serving in this Congress. 
This record represents a 59% increase from the 96 women who served in the 112th Congress. Women in this body have come a long way. I'm thrilled to continue to break glass ceilings as well as we impact history. For decades, women of all backgrounds have worked to break barriers in communities, workplaces, schools, universities. We often forget to give recognition to the lesser known women. The great Shirley Chisholm, who was the first black woman to serve in this body, famously said, if they don't give you a seat at the table, bring a folding chair. I say, let's take it a step further. Forget the seat, give women the whole table and watch what happens. As a black woman, I think about my own mother and all mothers who every day, even when it wasn't common to work, they sacrifice occupied space where they were underrated, underappreciated, and marginalized. Without that history and those individuals, we would not be who we are today, which is why I'm proud and I'm honored to represent my home, my ancestral home of the Virgin Islands. During this Virgin Islands History Month and Women's History Month, I proudly recognize the indomitable spirit of, eight, of women like Mary Thomas, one of the organizers of Fireburn, Anna Heigard, who was the woman who spoke to the governor, the Danish governor at the time, and convinced him and talked with him about emancipation, Bertha Bisholta, one of our educators, Arona Peterson, Senator Ruby Rouse, who was one of the first aide-de-camps of General Eisenhower during the war, a Virgin Islander. Edith Bourne, Lorraine Berry, one of the great legislators on our island. Early trailblazers who championed women's freedom, equality, and power for Virgin Islanders. While the faces of power are growing and there's still work to be done, it's refreshing to look back to gain inspiration and encouragement from Virgin Islanders who have gone before, and these women face deliberate, unconscious bias, and yet they prevailed. We should note the importance of representation for women in leadership, politics, law enforcement, across every sphere is evident. In politics alone, evidence shows that more women in public decision-making and public policy produce policies that benefit women, child, children, families in general. Women are more inclined to work across the aisle with colleagues, to work in a bipartisan fashion, to negotiate. As a lawyer, I know that the best contracts, the best negotiations, it was in everybody has to feel a little bit of pain for it to be the best. Women are willing to do that. Loans, we know that loans given to women businesses exponentially support families and entire communities than loans given to men. We need women. Let us all continue the great work, all of us. That includes men who are brothers, sons, fathers. We need you all to break the bias and advance the cause of women's rights in our communities, our government, and our world. Throughout the month of March, let us continue to celebrate heritage, history, as we look to our future. Happy Women and Virgin Islands History Month. I wanna rise and highlight a few influential women that have helped shape Virgin Islands history during Virgin Islands History Month. Now, of course, so often in the Virgin Islands, we talk about the men, and the men have done amazing things. The Virgin Islands has produced great actors and artists like Camille Pissarro, one of the founders of French Impressionism, actors like Kelsey Grammer and Lawrence Hilton Jacobs. We have tremendous athletes in our past, like Horace Clark, Elrod Hendricks, and of course, my own cousin, Elmo Plaskett, all having served in professional baseball. Peter Holmberg, a native St. Tomian, has done amazing things in sailing, as well as the Jackson family, father and sons are tremendous boxers. Of course, everyone knows us for having had Tim Duncan, one of the greatest, the GOAT, NBA player in history. 
Musicians like Alton Adams, the first naval bandmaster, Dion Parson, who has worked at Lincoln Center Jazz and has one of the most amazing jazz ensembles, John Lucien, another great artist. These are all tremendous. The men are great. But let us first talk about a few of the women in Virgin Islands history. The first one I can think of is Eulalie Rivera. Miss Rivera was born on August 2nd, 1907 in Frederickstead, St. Croix to Carl Rosen and Henrietta Williams and during her lifetime played a tremendous role in the Virgin Islands. In her autobiography, Growing Up in St. Croix, Miss Rivera gives an account of her life that portrays the attitudes and culture of the Virgin Islands at that time witnessing the transfer of the Virgin Islands from the Danish West Indies to the Virgin Islands of the United States, a change in ownership and complete culture, events to rumors of being the first woman to ride a bicycle on St. Croix. Eulalie's mother passed away during her childbirth and she was raised in homes for children where she was instilled a love of learning. Ms. Rivera dedicated more than 30 years to the education system in the Virgin Islands and taught at the Christian said kindergarten, the Diamond School, La Grande Princess School, and Claude Marco School. She was instrumental in helping the Caribbean culture and Virgin Islands culture by helping to create such activities as the St. Croix Christmas Festival. She served as president of the Women's League of St. Croix, supervisor of the Lutheran Church Sunday School, founder of the Independent Citizens Movement Political Party, a charter member of the St. Croix Business and Professional Women's Club, and a member of the Frederickstead Democratic Club, the Frederickstead Hospital Auxiliary, the Virgin Islands League of Women Voters, the Committee on Aging, and the Friends in Denmark. She was busy. She loved her home. In 1974, the Grove Place Elementary School was renamed after her. She is a beloved, a beloved ancestor and elder. I'd also like to recognize Eileen Peterson. Eileen Ramona Peterson was born on St. Croix and holds the distinct privilege of being the first woman to serve as a judge in the United States Virgin Islands. And she is also one of the few women jurists throughout the Caribbean region. I can recall Judge Peterson telling me about the fact that after she was nominated and confirmed in the Virgin Islands as a judge, the men thought that they would give her, get her, and she did not have an office. She didn't have internal chambers at which to work. And every day at lunchtime, she would take all the files from her courtroom and go and sit in her car and work on the cases before then going back to court and making decisions because there was no place else for her to work. That did not stop her from doing her job, executing justice, and doing what was right. Judge Peterson was the first appointed judge of the municipal court, now the Virgin Islands Territorial Court, by then Governor Melvin Evans in 1971. She became a practicing lawyer in 1967 in Washington, D.C., and she returned home to the Virgin Islands to give that education, that mind, so much that she had learned back to her, to her people. She became an assistant attorney general under Attorney General Francisco Canero. And after 20 years of service on the bench, she resigned and is now in her retirement. I would be remiss if I didn't mention another judge who's still with us, the Honorable Denise M. Francois. Denise Francois was born on St. Thomas, obtained her Bachelor of Arts from Amherst College, and continued at the University of San Diego School of Law, where she received her Juris Doctorate. She was admitted to the State Bar of California, the Virgin Islands Bar, and the U.S. Court of Appeals. She joined as a partner in a law firm on St. Thomas, where she worked for the people. In 2013, she was appointed judge of the Superior Court of the Virgin Islands. She has chaired the Advisory Committee on Rules and aided in drafting the Virgin Islands Rules of Civil Procedure and the Virgin Islands Rules of Evidence. She is still blazing a trail as a great jurist and a legal mind. 
I love libraries and I love books. And of course, I would have to speak about a librarian, a librarian and archivist, Miss Enid Maria Bay, who, for whom the library in Charlotte Amalie St. Thomas is named. She pioneered librarianship within the Virgin Islands, the Caribbean and internationally. She developed her love of library work when she was really young. As a new graduate of student of the first high school in St. Thomas, she helped establish the first high school library. Her interest in professional ambition led to several advanced degrees, including Hampton University and Columbia. During and after her studies at Columbia, she held professional positions at the university, at the United Nations Library, at the New York Public Library, in their reference division. And coming back home, she was appointed director of libraries and museums under Governor Archibald Alexander in 1954. She seconded to head the Caribbean Organization's Library in Puerto Rico and has been an editor, an archivist, so much work that she's been done to make sure that our history, the words of people, books are available to all. You know, many people forget about the smallest island. Well, Water Island is the smallest, but St. John, where there is so much work to be done and where people have worked so hard together. There was a woman who was born in 1908 in June, Myra Keating Smith. She's passed away and is with the elders from 1994. She was a pioneering nurse and midwife. She was the only provider of healthcare on the island of St. John for almost two decades. She was taught as a small child in homes, organizations of people on the island of St. John, bringing children together in parlors, in kitchens to learn. Her parents taught her themselves. At 14, they sent her on a boat to New York City, and then by train to be taught at Tuskegee Institute. Then, after working for some years, she came home in 1931. And she, by foot, boat, or by horseback, when there were no roads, were no trails, provided health care to the people of St. John. You know, our history is rich. There's so much that we all can learn from people who are so resilient, who are so willing to give of themselves, to go out, to learn, to educate themselves, to come back and give to the history, give to the future of the people of the Virgin Islands. I'm so great, grateful to be a part of that history, to be a Virgin Islander whose roots go back seven generations. It is my joy to come home on the weekends during district work period and run into most times people who are my cousins, my family, and more importantly, my friends. And in this month during March, it's even more important for us to reach back to that history. This July will be our 175th year from emancipation from slavery. It's important that all Virgin Islanders understand the importance of working together. You know, we tell, when we tell the story to our children about our emancipation, one of the most amazing things is that as the slaves were organizing, they really kept it to themselves what they had planned. And the day that they designated July 3rd to march to the fort and demand their freedom from the Danish military, as they reached the fort and the Danish soldiers began looking around and decided to put the cannons towards the crowd, they went and then to get the gunpowder to put into the cannons and realized that the gunpowder was all gone from the fort. The slaves over a series of months had surreptitiously and quietly removed all of the gunpowder and replaced the barrels with molasses. That takes people organizing and you know, understanding that you can have no snitches to get something like that done, and know that what was most important was them working together. And so on that day, as they reached the fort in Frederickstead and other slaves throughout the island, the conch shell blew to give the notice to the other slaves through the rest of the island, 
Everyone from Christian said at the other end of the island, out east, began marching all at once to try and demand their freedom. When the governor realized that these slaves had organized in the manner that they had, he declared that all enslaved are now free in the Danish West Indies from henceforth on. And so the people of St. Croix not only liberated themselves, but liberated their brothers, their sisters, and those who were on the other islands under Danish rule in St. Thomas, St. John, the Little Keys, all of the places throughout. It is that resilience, that fortitude, which I'm so grateful to have within my blood, to be a part of my history. And that is now American history. That is a part of all of our history that we can all celebrate. That's an example for all of us. That's not something to be shunned or to be ashamed of or for people to feel um, you know, embarrassed about or sad. Many people would say that that could be banned in other locations. That's my history. That's a history that now is part of American history. And so I'm hopeful that we can all take that in, that we can all see examples for our own lives, whether we are Caribbean or black or Hispanic, Latina, white, Caucasian, whatever, it's a history for us all. I'm so grateful for that history as we continue to live it each and every day. To end, I want to also recognize outstanding Virgin Islanders who are doing amazing things today, who are in the arts. And we have Virgin Islanders who have been awarded some of the highest honors in these last months. Theron Thomas, Masai Harris, Corey Alexander, Kyle Francis, each received recognition at the 75th Annual Grammy Awards for their excellent work in the music industry. Masai Harris, a native of St. Croix, was an integral part of the team that worked on a reg with a reggae artist. And his second album, Kabaka Pyramid's second album, which garnered a Grammy for Album of the Year. Theron Thomas, originally from St. Thomas, world-renowned producer, songwriter, received recognition for his songwriting on Lizzo's Record of the Year. And both Corey Alexander and Kyle Francis natives of St. Thomas, who worked on the album Kingdom, which won Best Gospel Performance. I would be remiss if I didn't lift up our sister, native Virgin Islander, Janelle James from St. Thomas, who won the 54th NAACP Image Award for Best Supporting Actress for her role in Abbott Elementary. These are Virgin Islanders doing amazing things we might be a small place, but we think big. We live our lives big. We do not restrict ourselves just to the waters under which we live. In the words of the popular Rock City song, who has its authors are those individuals that I mentioned um, who received part of the Grammy Awards. The world is our Scarface, even though we come from a small place. No matter where I am, I'm VI all day. Let's continue to be VI strong and VI proud. Happy Virgin Islands History Month. I yield back, Mr. Speaker. Gentlewoman yields back.